Welcome back to the channel, guys. I've been out for a minute. Tony D had some business to take care of outside the country, but I'm back and we're jumping right into it, okay? Um, before this video gets going, I'm gonna say there's multiple videos happening at the same time because I'm getting cranking on this car. It's time to make it happen. We're making some carbon fiber panels today. So if you're into that sort of thing, stay tuned, this is gonna be a good one. All right guys, so just to get you caught up to speed, we got a mess going on. So the car right now, she's in under surgery. We have a triple pass radiator going in. I've already mocked it up. At the same time, I've also done the wiring on the front bumper, as you can see. All right, so that's all done. And we got, we I, I did some videos on that. I know you guys seen a lot of wiring videos, but uh, this one's gonna be pretty good because you know, we're building the wire harness from scratch on this car, and I'll get into all that in that, in that video. And we're also featuring uh, the radiator that I put in this car, because it's a really nice piece, handmade, made in America, okay, for an affordable price, all right? So that video is on the way, the wiring's on the way. Point of this video is we're doing every little detail now as far as sealing up the airflow that the radiator is actually pulling the air in from the outside, making sure that we're pulling in fresh air from the outside, it goes through the radiator, cooling the engine off, and we're not having any leaks. At the same time, we wanna make sure that we're sucking in good, clean, fresh air into the turbocharger, all right? So prior to this, and a lot of times it's, they're wide open, this may be uh, micromanaging this area of the build, but we're, we're taking every little detail because in the end of the day, guys, if you do a little something here and a little something there, and you do all these little things to improve the quality of your build and for performance reasons, all those little things add up eventually, okay? So let me show you what we're working with. We have a turbo screen with an extension that's gonna poke past right about here, okay? But we also have the bumper that goes on and like the headlight bulb, everything, it's very tight. So I've mocked this up several times already to make sure my distance is proper and all that. So all the point of this is here, we're gonna make a carbon fiber panel to cover all this up. So when the extension comes through, it's sealed up around and the turbo is gonna get good, clean, fresh air entering it so we're not pulling any of the hot air that's getting blown through the radiator, all right? That's gonna, hopefully that's gonna help out with our, with our uh, air intake temperatures significantly, okay? I love carbon, okay? Carbon fiber in the motorcycle industry is a huge, huge uh, deal when you start getting into uh, parts made of carbon and I've, I've had the pleasure throughout my career to watch the technology in carbon parts go from just basic brackets to like wheels, okay? So basically carbon fiber, working with carbon can be, can be complicated, but it all depends on what you're making and how you want your finish to actually come out, all right? I want you guys to understand something. In this video, we're making a one-off filler panel only. And cosmetically, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's this, nobody's gonna see it. It's there to do a job, and that job is to block the airflow. And obviously, we wanna keep it as light as possible. So, with that being said, I'm not looking for a beautiful, smooth, silky, clean carbon fiber finish that's gonna be clear coated, wet sanded, and polished. That's not that. This is gonna be a very raw, rough part that if you guys decide to take on something like this yourself, you'll have a lot of fun doing. You should not be intimidated by this at all. And you'll, you'll impress yourself. And as you do more of it, your technique will get better and better and better. And you could possibly, you could start knocking out parts that are really cool and really badass for your car, okay? Um, so let's get started with what we got. The big player here is this beautiful carbon fiber material that I have. 
Now, this material is a 5.7 ounce 3K carbon fiber weave. And the biggest thing here is this. Nine out of 10 times, I will buy second quality carbon fiber. It's the same material as the first quality, right? Except every once in a while, there's a little glitch in the actual pattern, all right? Why do I do this? Tony D's cheap, all right? Gotta save some money somewhere, okay? That's one. Two, the imperfections are so small, it, it really, really makes no difference to me, all right? Some people are much more particular, but for me, it makes no difference. I'll try to point out some of the imperfections so you can see how, how minute they are, okay? When it comes to first quality and second quality carbon, the price drop in second quality is significant, guys. All right, so I always look for the second quality. As you can see, like, here's an imperfection, okay? That's what makes this second quality. See that little imperfection in the weave? It's still woven, it's not broken, it's just, that weave is just not perfect. And every once in a while, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the only one that I see. Every once in a while, you'll get something like that, which is, by the time you put resin on this, it, you'll, you'll never see it anyway. The schedule of the layup that we're gonna put on here is kind of like my own recipe, all right? For the center, this material, if you're ever gonna work with composites, this material is the heavy hitter, okay? This is 1708 biaxial, three quarter ounce mat, okay? So what we're looking at is woven, woven mat here on one side, and when we flip it over, there's chop strand on the other. The 1708 is strong. I mean, really strong. When this is cured up with the carbon, probably gonna be around uh, five mil thick, maybe a little bit less. But I will tell you this, you'll be able to park a dump truck on top of this thing and it won't break, all right? Very strong and very light, okay? So, how are we gonna make it all work? We're using right now, this is Total Boat Epoxy Resin. This is just your basic epoxy for working with composite materials. Now in the past, I've worked with two brands of epoxy, all right? This Total Boat product, which I like, and the West System also. So both those products, very good, very reputable, um, top quality epoxy. I don't know anything about other brands or you know, other qualities of epoxy, all right? When it comes to this, best of the best. Now, the only advice that I can give you, I, I see I buy, I buy the slow hardener, okay? Typically I buy slow hardener for most of my projects only because I'm slow, okay? It's that simple. When you buy the fast epoxy, some, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be doing your work and then it starts to kick on you. When it starts kicking and it's premature, no good, all right? Uh, you know, then you ruin your you ruin your project, and you got to start all over again. You got to be just as fast the next time, or if you got to be faster the next time. So I like to take my time. I like to work nice and slow. I like to get all my air bubbles out and everything like that. So I go with the the slow hardener, all right. And that's pretty much that. Aside that, number two most important thing when it comes to working with epoxy, don't mix a lot of resin, okay? If you mix too much resin and let it sit in your cup, don't walk away from it, especially don't leave it in the shop on a table and, and like after you're done with your layup and walk away from it because it does generate a lot of heat, okay? And if you make, if you mix your batch hot, by when I say hot, meaning a little bit too much hardener, sometimes that happens, it can spontaneously combust, all right? Does it happen? Often, no, but can it happen? Yes, so be careful with that. You know, these are pretty serious chemicals, guys. So, you know, wear your gloves, wear a respirator. The, the epoxy doesn't really smell too bad, doesn't have too much fume, so it's not that bad. But uh, the chemical reaction does generate a lot of heat. So just wear your gloves, wear your glasses if you want. You know, make sure you take care of yourself and don't get it on your hands, because you know, this stuff is very strong and very hard to get off, okay? 
All right, guys, so let's let's make some parts. Let's lay this thing up and, and uh, let's give it a shot here. And all this stuff, guys, translates to, like I said, a one-off part. We're not making a plug. We're not making a mold for, from a plug. We're making a one-off part, okay? And we're gonna make it out, we're, we're gonna make our form from some clear packing tape, all right? That's how easy this is gonna be, all right? As elementary as this may seem, it's a very fast and easy way to make a custom part. Now I wanna make sure that I get this tape on there nice. You know, no air bubbles. Nice and flat. Straight as possible. And then when there's, there's got this little contour like this, nice and straight. The flatter you get the tape on, the better the finish will come out on the inside. We got this guy pretty, pretty good. All right, and what I'm feeling for, like I'm just trying to make it smooth, like the tape, no wrinkling in the tape and stuff. It's, it's not pretty, but it's not as bad as it could be. All right, and like I said, this here, it really, really, it helps if you're as neat as possible about it. But, like I said, we're, this isn't a plug, you know? We're not making a plug. You could make a plug out of this, and then, you know, make the plug perfect, and then pull molds from that. But uh, for this purpose, like I said, it's a one-off piece. Just making a little filler, filler panel. And I think we're ready. I'm just making sure that there's no air pockets. And I want a nice flat flange here, so when it sticks on, I put some screws, everything sits flat. Okay? But I think we're ready to start making a template and then doing this layup. You don't call me freestyle for a reason, guys. I'm just putting the paper up in there. Kind of see how it looks. On the edges, I'm gonna push it with my finger. And start getting a shape. Of how we want this to be. All right, it's fitting pretty good. I'm make some final, some final pieces here. Just your, your basic templating with paper and some tape, real quick. Basically just lay that up in there. It's oversized now, so we can cut and trim it and everything like that. So now we're going to take this, transfer it onto the carbon, and the 70, 1708. We'll cut it out, we're going to make our schedule layup, and then smack it on here, real easy. We're going to lay it on. We get about just what we need here. Okay, we're going to take our tape first thing. I'm gonna go past the edge of the carbon. Any scissors will do, guys. You know, as long as they're nice and sharp. Make this easy. I'm gonna cut a little bit bigger, guys, than the template. Like I said it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting it in the neighborhood. We're gonna do the same thing with the 1708. With this, guys, I'm just gonna take a marker. I'm gonna give it a rough trace. Okay, now we got all our pieces cut. We're gonna put all this away. We don't need any of this, we'll get it out of the way, keep it clean. So the schedule is gonna be one piece of carbon, then the 1708. It doesn't matter which side goes which, 
here because you know you're not going to see it. Typically, though, I like to put the mat side down and the chop strand side facing up. Okay. So before we do that, we're going to put a little wax on the tape. This way, when we go to pull it off, it kind of releases really good for us. There is some special wax, like mold release wax that you can use. This is some basic automotive car wax. I love, I love Formula One, or they used to call this kit. Really good stuff. It's going to get a good... It's going to wax this up as best as possible. Maybe one or two coats. I'm going to go crazy. So we'll put this on, we'll let it dry, we'll lightly buff it. And then uh, we're ready to lay it up. Like I said, this is this is a fast and nasty, guys. Fast and nasty situation here. So this this solid resin here, it's five to one, but these pumps are actually calibrated. So it's just one pump of each. All right, and that's about all the resin that we're mixing up here. So like I said, this is slow resin, guys. Mix it up, this stuff you gotta mix real, real good. Maybe mix it for like a minute or two. Just drop some resin on. I'm going to squeegee it out. Take it all the way to the edge. Okay, so we got a nice wet layup. Come in with our biaxial. Now this stuff soaks the resin in, guys. So you want it to get, you know, turn nice and translucent on you. I find doing my layup on the table is a lot easier this way than trying to lay it up like on the on the car, you know, or like say on a part that you're working on. Just you know, work the air bubbles out of it. Take a razor blade real quick. I'm just gonna go around it real quick with a razor. I got everything laid up and then I went around, I trimmed a little bit, did a little cleaning, so on and so forth. And you can see what I'm doing now is, I mean, it's starting to, it's starting to get warm to the touch. So that's good. It's starting to kick a little bit. So I'm just making sure everything's kind of where I want it. For the most part it laid out real nice you know when it dries it'll look like this just a just a rough natural carbon we're not worried about the weave shape or you know how cosmetically it looks but we're going to do the best we can to make it as nice as possible it's too small and too complex to use a fin roller which is a metal roller guys and we, we're not really using, we're not really trying to get the air out because we've already done that. There's no air in this at all, you know. Um, that's why we laid it up on the table. See, if we, had to, if we had to do one piece of carbon, then the 1708, then the other piece of carbon, we're doing all this work in the car and it, it really makes for... A lot of extra work now if it was just carbon 
it would have been a lot easier because the carbon bends and moves way easier than the, than the uh, fiberglass 1708. However, uh, doing it this way makes it just that much stronger. So, it's pretty much it. We're going to let this cure. And now after this dries, we'll pop it off and show you what it looks like. This is good, guys. You can make all kinds of brackets and any type of, all kinds of parts, all right? Just depending on the schedule that you use to lay up your carbon. You know, if you get structural carbon and you decide not to use the fiberglass, which is normally what you see, so it'd be some structural, some, you know, some regular weave, some structural carbon, a few layers of that, and then the decorative weave, the 2K, boom. Lay that up nice, flat. You wanna make, you wanna make panels, Use a piece of acrylic or plexiglass. Wax it up real good. Lay it on there. Pop it off. There you go. Make your carbon fiber, okay? So uh, we're going to let this dry. We'll pop it off. We'll do some sanding on it. And then we'll do some final fitment. Drill some holes. Screw it in. And send it on our way. All right? And we'll move on to the next step. We're all locked up. And uh, the next step is going to be to pop this out. But now... Uh, anytime they say, anytime they talk about, you know, this being like itchy and dangerous and whatnot, this is the point we're talking about because now it's, it's all locked up and like these edges, these edges are sharper than razor blades. So you got to be super careful. I already started like working it a little bit and It released pretty good. All right, we'll do a little sanding now, shape this thing. And I know it looks like total shit, but you're gonna be like, what the hell, after I'm done with this. Pull our tape off. Boom, like it never happened. The first step is gonna be to trim these edges just to, just to get it all safe to handle. And then we'll start, start sanding on it and everything. Okay guys. So after sanding the backside, see it's looking pretty rough, right? But it's really not. It's actually in good shape. Now sometimes you get it in one shot, just like body work. Other times it takes one or two times, three times. The fitment, absolutely perfect, I'm loving it. We'll give it a little bit more structure. So this is gonna be a laminating style, guys, now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush some epoxy on, I'm gonna stick the carbon on it, I'm gonna work it into all the corners, and I'm gonna hit the top with epoxy. I'll let it dry, I'll trim it, See, epoxy, guys, you, you got to sand it in order to build up another layer. If we were using fiberglass resin or polyester resin, they have laminating resin. So it doesn't have to be uh, sanded prior to laying up your next, your next uh, sheet of glass or carbon. I was hoping to nail it in one shot, but it is what it is. Life ain't perfect, and neither is going to be your carbon fiber. I'm going to brush on some resin. Now, this will be the, after I lay this up, this will be like the final finish here, guys. So we want to put this on, because we don't want a dry layup. We want a nice wet layup, so we don't run into any delamination issues. Now, for the other side, I'm undecided. I might just, I might do one more layer on the other side just for good measure. We'll see how it looks. But, uh... Something like this where it's double-sided, you're going to see it um, one side at a time. It slows the process down, but it's just how it goes. So we got resin on the part, and we're wetting out our carbon. We're going to give it a little time, and as soon as it kicks, as soon as it starts to, I'm not going to say kick, but as soon as it starts to kind of mature, we're going to lay it up. So just make sure you're nice and wet out, without it being too wet, because then 
we run into delamination issues as well. So not enough resin, no good. Too much resin, no good. That's basically how it's gonna be for now. We're gonna let that dry, trim it, and then possibly do the other side or just take some of the scraps and kinda of stitch it all together. Who knows, all right? But basically that's our finished product. The first side dried, we're on our second layer. I flipped it over and just repeated the same process on this side, laid it up nice. And the only thing I did extra on this side, guys, I just ran the heat gun a little bit I just flattened out the uh, epoxy. I'm just gonna let it sit now and uh, we'll trim it up one final time and that's gonna be our final part, okay? Guys, you can do this. I encourage you to do this. It's a lot of fun. Be careful just trimming this stuff because it can be ir irritating to your skin and all. So just be smart about it, whatever. Um, but don't be afraid, you know? Don't be afraid of doing something outside of your comfort zone. Okay guys, so after after sanding, trimming up the edges, all I've done is hit it with some Scotch-Brite just to take some of that top gloss off, chill it out a little bit like that. I'll keep doing, I'll wipe it down. I haven't even wiped it down yet. I'm just like literally right here with the Scotch-Brite, just giving them a unidirectional scuff. Scuffing it that way, I can do a little bit more. And then once we get it all, nice matte look. Now you can, guys, you can do anything you want with this. You can clear coat it. You can hit it with a semi-gloss, satin gloss, whatever you want. All right, however you want it to look. Me, we're sending it just like this. Taking, you know, gonna, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more and that's gonna be it. So this is it completed. All I did was give it a nice scotch bright finish, knock the shine off of it. Um, I went around with some universal edge molding. I love using this stuff everywhere, okay? So this, this helps in making a, a really nice seal all the way around. All right, and I also did it right here on the tube. And what's nice is, even if you're a little, you cut this a little bit bigger, you can push it in and get your seal, all right? So it seals up 100% perfect, okay? So here's how it looks from the back. Working with composites carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar. All the processes here are very similar. This is not something that requires a crazy amount of equipment. With a little bit of creativity, a little bit of time and patience, you can do this too, okay? Practice. Work with fiberglass, it's cheaper, you know, in the beginning. If you wanna step up the, the materials, step up to, you know, a carbon or a Kevlar down the road. Um, with that being said, guys, stand by. We got a lot of good stuff coming. Like I mentioned earlier, we got the radiator coming. We got the wiring harness coming. So I'm going to share with you guys uh, all the techniques that I use when I'm doing stuff like this, uh, building, fabbing up, and so on. Because this could help you out, not, not so much just with your Fox body, but with anything that you're building, whether it's, you know, any car, motorcycle, boat, whatever you're doing, okay? All these things apply, all right? So I really hope you got something out of this one, guys. D using this technique has really helped me out during the course of the times in my life when I've been fabricating custom parts, okay? So I hope it works out for you. So with all that being said, let's go, Brandon, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.